today we're going to talk about style that can go anywhere. I'm Angela Wolf, fashion designer and pattern designer. And I made this dress in an afternoon. Designed it, sewed it, everything. Rolled it in my suitcase for a wedding for Florida. I'm going to show you how easy this is. Here I have just a very slinky knit. This is what they call ITY knit. It's really stretchy and a lot of people are afraid to sew with it. Really, this is the easiest stuff to work with once you get over the fear. So what I have here is just the front and the back. And even if you're cropping a pattern, this is how it looks, just the top like this. I have it pinned to the shoulders and side seams, which we're gonna surge together, all with a serger, and then we're gonna add binding to the armholes and the neck. All the binding is, is a fabric, same thing, ITY, that stretches, which means we don't have to attach it quite like bias binding, but we're gonna attach it like binding. And I'm gonna show you how. And one more thing while this is laying flat, when I attach these bindings, which you'll see, there are certain areas that you ease the fabric. Notice how much this stretches at the neckline, but it doesn't stretch quite as much or actually at all through here. So look at my arm right here. If I were to ease the entire armhole and the entire neckline, I'd end up with wrinkles through here. So that's what I'm talking about. So we're gonna take this to the serger, and I have changed the needles in the serger to a ballpoint needle, and I'm using silk pins to make sure I don't pierce my fabric. So let's head over to the serger. I have the shoulders pinned, and I have the side seams pinned, and I'm gonna show you how quickly this goes. I have a three thread overlock. I'm using pink thread so you can see it. And I'm just gonna stitch all the way around. It's really a good idea to test your stitch first to make sure that it's not too far away or too, you know, you can change your stitch length on this to make it just perfect. If you didn't notice, I moved over to the other shoulder seam. And guess what? I haven't cut a thread yet, I'm still stitching. Do you notice that? I'm going down the side seam. You notice I'm not pulling the fabric, I'm not stretching, I'm letting the machine do its job. That's what a serger does. Getting to the end down here. Oh, we got one more side here. Now I am gonna cut it. And you flip it over. I, what I've done is I've stitched all of the seams going the same direction, pretty much. Well, the side seam, I should say. And we're going down. By the way, you are a quarter of the way done with the dress already. So here is my top. I'm gonna to go right over here to the binding. I'll just trim these off. All right, we're gonna do one armhole here. What I have, I've already sewn this binding for you. All this is is fabric cut two inches wide. I add a seam like this and then I fold it this way. Okay, and I've already done that on both of these. Why wouldn't you just do a top stitch? Because guess what, the top stitch doesn't stretch. The serging does, look at, whoa. So here we go, I'm gonna pin this in place. I'm pinning the armhole right here. And I'm gonna flip this so you can see it a little bit better. This is the tricky part. And you're gonna do this for both armholes. The bias is just about one inch less in width than your armhole. So I'm stretching my armhole to meet one end to the other. See my pin right here? Let's get this end. That's the halfway point. You don't even need to mark it. Just use your hands like that. And then reach your hands kind of down a little ways and find the quarter point and put a pin. And do the same thing to the other side. Now I'm only gonna stitch in one armhole for you. You obviously are gonna do both. But I wanna show you just a little tip here. Go back to the serger. All right, this is the underarm seam. We are going to ease the fabric from here to here, but the upper shoulder seam, we are not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start, this is halfway up either the front or back arm, I can't really tell where I am here. And I wanna show you one more trick here. See this long thread? Just pull it around to the front, and it'll cut it off and get it out of the way when you start stitching. Just a little tip to keep things neat. Now, I'm feeding the fabric without stretching at all. If I go like this, it's going to look terrible. Just let it ease in. And now we're getting about to the halfway point. 
on the front. All right, make sure you pull out your pins as well. All right, here's the bottom. This is your underarm area. This is the part where you're gonna have to stretch this just a little bit to fit. And I'm easing in that underarm area. That's the underarm. The neckline's gonna be a little bit different. See how nice that looks? No ripples, nothing. All right, now I already have the neckline pinned on this one. You can see the neckline. I have the front to the back, and I've quartered it, just like we did with the other, so here's your neckline. Now, where are you not going to ease? You're not gonna ease from the shoulder, the front shoulder to the back shoulder. So I'm going to start there. Go ahead and put that under the serger. Get rid of this thread here. One other little trick here is sometimes I'll take the bottom fabric and let it peek out just a little bit. It's not gonna mess up your seam allowances. And that way you can see that you're catching that and you don't end up with missing some stitches. Again, I'm going over this area. I am not stretching my bias tape at all. Now I'm at the center back. I'm gonna stretch it just, I'm pulling this just a little bit to ease in that neckline. It's the center back area and the center front of your neckline that will stretch out. All right, now we're at the shoulder. Do not stretch that, do not stretch this. Let it just sew or surge. All right, we're getting to the front. This is a very important part. We're about a quarter of the way down, so you have to picture we're about right here if this was your neckline, right here. And now I'm going to stretch this to ease in that fabric. You can see I've marked this with chalk to match my little notch for the center position. It's a good idea to give yourself little markings as you go. Otherwise, you end up with a little bit of a skewed area. All right, again, we're easing this in, getting back around. I'm gonna show you a little trick here. See how I flip that around? I flip that around. All I'm gonna do is cut that off, that chain. Then you don't have to worry about it coming unraveled. So I'll still trim that, but see this little loop? Now, you wouldn't need one that big, but I wanted to show you what I was doing. All right, let's go back up here, see what we have. Our neckline. Looks really nice. This is not, see there's no puckering through the shoulders. It looks great. So the next step is going to be, I would measure from here across the bottom of my top. And this is the skirt, just a simple skirt, part of the pattern. This is also a piece of binding, but notice this is the exact same measurement of the skirt. You notice you don't see any wrinkles? So what I wanna make sure is that the measurements from here to here match exactly right, otherwise you end up with wrinkles. And all I'm gonna do is, I do have this basted so you could see it. So I have the belt on there. All it is is a piece of binding. I took a piece just like this, folded it, and attached it. I'm just gonna take this, it would be with right sides out, and this would be attached. So you'd be sandwiching in that belt. And when you're finished, you would end up with that belt. Very simple to do. The hardest part is the neckline and the armholes. All right, what about the hem? You have a few options. This is a, definitely a slinky knit. You have a cover hem, which looks just like this, if you have a cover hem machine. Or you could do a really fun lettuce edge, which is done on the serger. But what if you don't have those and you want, well, you have a serger, obviously. I just showed you how to use that. But let's talk about a twin needle. I'm folding up this fabric, giving it a little press using the Taylor's clapper, which holds that in place. I've done that all the way around the skirt. Do you see this crease here? It just folds back perfectly. Run it through the machine. Here I have twin needles of many different sizes, and this is how simple it is to hem this. The only change I'm gonna make is I put in a twin needle. I'm using contrasting threads so you can see it, and I'm changing the stitch length to 3.5. It just looks a little bit more professional. And I'm just, I have this folded, and I'm just going to stitch. And I'm just gonna do a little sample here. You would do this all the way around the skirt. 
making sure you're not stretching the fabric. You just want the fabric, let the machine do its job. So here I have, I'm gonna go back up here so you can see this. I'm gonna press this. So you can see that yellow thread pretty good. On the back side, it looks like zigzags. Now let's compare that with that piece here I had from the cover hem, which you see in a lot of ready to wear. It looks exactly the same from the right side of the garment. And from the back, see how it stretches? That's the whole point. So when it stretches, you don't pull out your stitches. This does exactly the same. This just looks like a bunch of zigzags. So let's take another look at that dress. That was a lot of information, but I gave you everything that's difficult on here. Here is that little belt I was telling you about. All it is is that piece of fabric folded in there, stitched on, and that's it. So I hope I give you enough tips that you can go sew up a dress in an afternoon. <laughs>